Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Secret Nazi Base A group of Russian scientists have made an outrageous claim, saying they found the remnants of a secret Nazi base. Where did they find this mysterious base? On a random island in the middle of the Arctic Circle. The scientists had gone there to do their own research when they stumbled upon over 500 artifacts left behind by the Nazis. This has led them to believe the island was once a base called Schatzgraber or Treasure Hunter. There have been rumors about the base ever since World War II, but nobody really believed it existed. Now, looking at how much evidence was discovered on an island named Alexandraland, gas canisters, bullets, the ruined husks of bunkers, it looks like the base may have been the real deal. As far as historical records show, the base posed as a weather station in the Arctic, built in 1942 on direct orders from Hitler. This was right after he invaded Russia, but nobody ever found physical evidence of it up until just now. It was abandoned just a year later in July of 1944. The stories explaining the reason it was forsaken claim that staff at the site consumed undercooked polar bear meat and they found themselves contaminated with roundworm. They ended up so sick and poisoned that they had to be rescued by a U-boat. Apparently, after the submarine evacuated the soldiers, the site was abandoned and no one ever went back. Number 9. Disappearing Shipwrecks World War II shipwrecks have been disappearing without a trace. According to marine archaeologist Beverly Goodman, these mysterious shipwrecks are vanishing worldwide. But they aren't simply disintegrating into nothing, they are being raided by humans. It's a practice known as metal piracy, with salvagers actually diving down and pillaging the metal from forgotten shipwrecks from World War II. To them, shipwrecks are great big pieces of cash just waiting to be picked apart and sold. After all, these ships are huge, filled with brass and metal and copper, and heaps of electrical equipment that can be sold for a huge profit. To give you an example of just how much money these shipwrecks are worth, look at just one bronze propeller. It can go for tens of thousands of dollars at a scrap buyer. A single wreck can be sold for nearly one million dollars if picked apart properly. The result of this thievery is that researchers have been finding shipwrecks either cut in half or completely gone. It's tragic because there are still plenty of shipwreck hunters out there trying to find lost vessels from World War II. Yet when they go down to find them, the ships are gone because someone's already found them, cut them up, and sold them for cash. What do you think of this practice? Let me know in the comments! Number 8. Secret Assassins Freddy Overstegen joined the Dutch resistance when she was just 14 years old. A couple years after that, she became one of the most dangerous armed assassins in the country. She joined forces with her sister, a younger woman by the name of Hanny Schaft, and together they killed German Nazis. But they didn't just kill them. They lured and ambushed them in a way that, had this not been war, would have been pretty disturbing. It was May of 1940 when the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. The occupation would go on until the very last days of the war. According to historian Jerome Pleister, the girls never did admit exactly how many people they assassinated, but we do know that they used their youth and innocence to literally get away with murder. Freddy in particular was an expert in the art of deception. She once seduced a German officer with the SS so that another fighter from the resistance could sneak up and shoot him. She was the real deal, hunting and killing Dutch collaborators and anyone who endangered the lives of Jewish refugees. Have you ever heard of her? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Hitler's Anti-Gravity Machine Hitler had a secret anti-gravity machine that he apparently procured from space aliens. Oh, and the United States stole it! At least that's the legend behind Die Glock, the extraterrestrial weapon developed by Nazi scientists to turn the ties of war. Die Glock, which translates into English as The Bell, is likely nothing more than the product of a mysterious crash in the 1960s and the endlessly churning rumor mill of online UFO enthusiasts. There aren't actually historical records of the Nazis having a wonder weapon that could manipulate gravity. The first mention of it appeared in a German sci-fi book in 1960. It then came up again in 2000, detailed in a book written about old Nazi technology by a guy named Igor Witkowski. 
but it was just shortly after that when Nick Cook wrote a book including an anti-gravitational time machine that was part of an SS program. Again, all science fiction. Yet the rumor of such a bizarre weapon persists today, with people even linking it to the Kecksburg incident of 1965, when a UFO supposedly crashed in Pennsylvania. Number 6. The Amber Room the Amber Room is without a doubt one of the most mysterious treasures from World War II. It was designed for Charlottenburg Palace by a renowned German architect back in 1701. Construction commenced by a pair of master craftsmen to create the most beautiful room ever built. It was installed at the Berlin City Palace, where Peter the Great of Russia saw it during a visit in 1716. To forge an alliance with Russia against Sweden, Friedrich William I gifted it to the Russian Empire. It took 10 years for the Amber Room to be installed at the summer house of the imperial family. Of course, this wasn't just any summer house, it was Catherine Palace. The installation was such a pain because there were over 6 tons of amber with a value of over $240 million that had to be moved. But the room was full of more than just amber. There were also architectural features, carvings, gold leaf, statues of angels, and mirrors designed to illuminate the room in a golden glow using nothing but candlelight. When the German forces invaded the Soviet Union, they disassembled the Amber Room and removed it. Hitler felt the Amber Room belonged to Germany, since it started out in Germany all those years ago. They transported it to Konigsberg Castle, where it sat for two years. Then, Hitler gave the order to bring all that amber somewhere deep within Germany. It remains a mystery what happened to the Amber Room after that. The castle was firebombed by the Royal Air Force in 1944. The collection of amber was allegedly on a train back to Germany when that very train disappeared. Nobody has seen the treasure in almost 80 years. Where do you think it could be now? Tell me your theories in the comments! Number 5 the Bizarre Army Air Force Mascot In World War II England, a live coyote became the unofficial mascot of the Army Air Forces. But how did an actual coyote become the inspiration for a group of British airmen? It all started thanks to John Crump, an American pilot who flew three different planes during the war. He also smuggled a live coyote pup onto his ship when he left the US for England. The coyote's name was Jeep an orphan adopted by Crump just before he was sent to battle. When they arrived in the United Kingdom, Jeep was welcomed with open arms by the members of the 356th Fighter Group at Royal Air Force Martlesham Heath Airfield. He was given his own dog tags, he flew on five missions in Crump's P-47 Thunderbolt, and he became an inspiration for all the other airmen. Sadly, Jeep was run over by a vehicle in Ipswich after his fifth mission in October of 1944. Jeep was then given a proper burial with full military honors. A memorial plaque was erected, and it can still be found at Playford Hall to this very day. It goes to show just how unlikely many of the heroes in the war really were. Number 4. Operation Mincemeat Operation Mincemeat was a secret mission pulled off by British intelligence officers during World War II. It was actually one of the most successful deceptions ever achieved during wartime. It happened in April 1943, when a decomposing corpse was found floating near southern Spain. Personal documents revealed him to be a man named Major William Martin with the Royal Marines. He had a black attaché case handcuffed to his wrist. Now, keep in mind that Spain was officially neutral but sort of pro-Germany during the war. It didn't take long for Nazi intelligence to learn about a mysterious floating officer with a briefcase chained to his wrist. When the body was searched, they found a letter written by military authorities in London, meant for a senior British officer stationed in Tunisia. The letter indicated that the Allies were preparing to cross the Mediterranean from North Africa to attack Greece and Sardinia, which were both occupied by the Nazis. It was all a trick. Hitler transferred German troops from France to Greece after hearing about the letter. He thought there was going to be a massive invasion by the enemy, but the drowned man was actually a vagrant whose body was taken out of a London morgue. The body was then transported by a race car driver to a Royal Navy submarine who dumped it off the Spanish coast. That was exactly when British authorities began a desperate attempt to recover the body and the case he was holding. Their efforts to supposedly try and get a hold of the case convinced the Nazis that the documents were real. 
As a result of the operation, the Nazis were completely blindsided when 160,000 troops invaded Sicily instead of Greece, and there was no one there to stop them. This secret operation directly led to the fall of Mussolini and was one of the first major steps in turning the tide of war in favor of the Allies. Number 3. The Freemasons Amongst the millions of people that the Nazis tried to exterminate, they also had it out for the Freemasons. In the 1930s, the Nazi regime began spreading bizarre conspiracy theories about the Freemasons, calling them liberal intellectuals and saying they needed to be destroyed. Their secretive circles of influence would no longer be tolerated. When it came to wartime, the Nazis did what they did best. They began to systematically hunt down and eradicate the Freemasons. While they were committing these heinous acts, they collected a vast trove of Freemason artifacts going back to around the 17th century. They managed to get their hands on over 80,000 items from Masonic lodges, houses of Freemasons, and so on. It's now, according to museum specialist Juliana Grasinska, the biggest Masonic archive anywhere in Europe, and it's still full of mysteries. But why did the Nazis hate the Freemasons so much? It was because of ideology. They were very anti-intellectual and anti-elitism, and Hitler loved spreading ideas of the occult. The thing is that he had to be the one in charge of all the info, and the Masons were pretty much the exact opposite, a group of intellectual elites. But the Soviets also hated the Freemasons and even banned their practice under communism. What's pretty interesting is that Freemasonry was to Germany and Russia what communism was to the United States during the exact same time. What do you think it is about the mysterious and secretive Freemasons that appears so dangerous to certain governments? Let me know your thoughts in the comments! Number 2. Operation Gunnerside Operation Gunnerside was one of the most incredible secret missions of World War II. It was straight out of a James Bond movie. On February 27, 1943, nine Norwegian commandos went to work. They infiltrated a hydroelectric plant held by the Germans. The Vimark plant was owned by a company called Norsk Hydro, but the Germans had taken control of it and were trying to keep that fact a secret. But the Norwegians weren't having any of it. Their mission was to destroy the water pipes in the basement. They had to destroy them at all costs, although at the time, they had no idea why. The Germans were using the plant to produce heavy water, or deuterium oxide. It's a special water molecule the Germans were hoping to use instead of graphite for creating an atomic bomb. When they had taken control of the plant, they shifted all production to heavy water. They were desperate to make the first atomic bomb the world had ever seen, and this plant was critical for their success. The Norwegian commandos jumped from a plane under the cover of snowfall at about midnight, but they missed their mark and had to walk for five days through the snow just to reach the plant. They then broke in, divided into different squads, and set bombs throughout the plant to sabotage the water pipes. Straight from a Hollywood movie, the team escaped the building with just seconds to spare and skied away down the side of the mountain as the explosion went off behind them. They then traveled over 200 miles to Sweden using nothing but their skis. Every single member escaped successfully, and the water pipes were destroyed. Number 1. Philippine Gold there is said to be a secret treasure hoard of gold from World War II hidden in the Philippines, but then again, the gold may not even exist. The story of the gold goes back to General Yamashita, a Japanese commander who had been stationed in the Philippines and was notorious for hoarding all the gold and valuables that his soldiers took during raids. Yamashita, near the end of the war, became desperate to hide his collection of gold so that he could come back for it later, or at least so the Americans couldn't have it. He allegedly oversaw the burial of millions of dollars worth of gold loot that had been collected throughout Asia during the Japanese offensive. Yamashita then held out against the American forces for a few weeks before being forced to surrender in 1945. Yamashita was captured, tried for war crimes against humanity, and executed in 1946. He never said where his gold was, but people are pretty sure it's in the Philippines. It could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars but nobody has ever found it. Do you really think there's a secret stash of gold hidden in the Philippines? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!